You ready? <gasps> What's that? What's that? You're a star. You're a star, YouTube. You are. <laughs> Hi, darlings. I hope you're all all right and keeping safe and taking care of yourselves. This is Milo. Say hello, Milo. No, not very talkative. So, like I said, um, I'd like to have a little ramble with you all about my experience being a first-time dog owner. Because I'm a pussy person, really. Well, I always have been up to now. And uh, the differences between what well, I've experienced between having a cat and a dog and, and how it's like having a child, <laughs> having, a, having a baby, isn't it? <laughs> God, look at that dunk. Oh, God. You can you could lick a whole window with that. Anyway. Oh, I just know this is going to be... Oh, this is going to be a to-do, isn't it, today? Isn't it? You look very excited. Look at those dreamy eyes. You're going to go to sleep now, aren't you? Anyway, let's get on with it before... I, before everybody else falls asleep. <laughs> um, Milo... As I said, it's been a unique experience for me having a dog because up to now, I've always had cats from a very little girl. Always had cats. My parents had dogs and my sister's a dog lover. But uh, I'd never had a doggy before. And, and what I've realised is that having a dog, it's very much like having a baby. And uh, what I did, I noticed the other day, you know, all the little things that I do with him that I, I used to do with James, you know, when James was a baby. You see, technically, I am his nanny, aren't I, Bab? Um, Milo is my son's dog. And so I'm his granny, aren't I, Bab? And uh, he's born asleep now. <laughs> nanny sent him to sleep. Um, and I really do feel, you know, grandmotherly towards him. You know, I think back to when, you know, I was little and my nans were alive. And the feeling that I have for him is very much, you know, how my grandmother's felt about myself and my sister. Anyway, I wrote a list. And, because uh, you know I'm like a, you know, I'm a bit like a goldfish. <laughs> Forget stuff. So, I thought I'd go through it. All the things that I do for Milo that are quite childlike. And uh, you can tell me at the end of the list whether or not I'm balmy or not. And uh, I'd be interested to know, you know, how you guys feel about your animals, your pets. Whether... You're as the same as me and you, you babyfy them and, you know, whether or not you feel that they're like ch having children as well. I noticed, as I said, very early on, that Milo would become like a child to me. And I think a lot of that's to do with the fact that Milo came at... Um, at a time where I was in a lot of a lot of stress and um, was pretty low, you know, with all this COVID stuff that's been going on and uh, being furloughed from work, you know, I'm I'm losing twenty percent of my wages every month and things are becoming a little bit of a struggle. And also, as you know, I lost my um, cat, Mister Pickles, the other month and. You know, I, I really feel that Milo has been sent to me for a reason, you know, to to get over, to help me get over all that's gone on, you know. He really has taken my mind off it. And I think that's why I've become so connected with him, you know. It's looking after him and it's took my mind off all my problems. And... Um, I'm very grateful for that. He's a great stress reliever. 
you know, now that I can take him out for walkies and everything. We go out, don't we, Bab? And we go into the sunshine or into the field and we play ball. And, you know, I get out and about and have some fresh air. And it, it does, it, it lifts your spirits. Anyway, I'm rattling on here. Let's get on with my list. Number one. I think the main difference between having Milo and uh, having cats, my experience of being a cat owner, is that I find that you do a lot more for them because they're not so independent. Cats are very, um, well, they can be very standoffish, can't they? I mean, there are cats that are love bugs, but the most most of the time, cats, you know, they sort of do for themselves, don't they? Well, dogs, I've noticed, and I didn't realise this, they're very much like kids in, the, in as much as they need everything doing for them. And the number one thing on my list is cleaning. I, I, I clean his face. You know, like you wash a kid's face. You know, after he's, he's had something to eat or once we've been out, I, I wipe his paws, you know, when he comes in from outside, just like you would a kid, you know. And uh, I check his bum, you know, after he's been to the toilet to make sure he's not in a mess. So I, I noticed that I'm doing all of these things and you don't do that for cats, do you? I, I can't. I mean, occasionally my um, colour point Persian, uh, Mister Tinkles, who I lost, all oh, crumbs. It's nine years ago now. Uh, I used to wash his face because, of course, having a squishy face, it affects the tear ducts, you know. And he used to get a little bit of gunk here. But I mean, he's about the only cat that I've actually ever cleaned. You know, I know some people wash their cats. And I think those hairless cats, the Sphinx, I think they need bathing. But I've never cleaned a cat the way I realise that now that you have to you have to clean a dog. So there's the number one thing that I do. Also, um, washing. You know when you have a baby and all of a sudden the washing machine is never off because there's always more and more clothes and bedding and towels and all the rest of it. Well, having Milo, it's like going back to when Jay was a baby. I'm always washing his bed. He's got two beds, you know, and I have one in the wash and one using. I notice I'm, I'm always washing his towels and his blankets. So I noticed the washing, the washing machine's never off. Is it, Bab? Because like cats, well, my cats anyway, my cats don't have beds. They sort of just, you know, lie salubrously wherever they think they will. But um, having a dog, there's a lot of washing involved, isn't there? No one told me that. Number three, buying stuff. It's like having a baby again. You know, when you've got kids, you always go to the children's section. You know, you might have left the house thinking to yourself, oh, I must get myself X, Y, Z. And you don't get it. You won't buy anything for yourself. But what you will do is go out and spend all your money on your kids. And you come home and you haven't bought yourself the thing that you actually do need. But you've bought the kids a load of stuff. Well, I'm doing that for him. I, I don't tell you what I've put on my credit cards and how much money I've spent. I don't tell Dom, to be honest with you. I'm always buying him something. And I'm gravit I notice that I'm gravitating towards the pet section to the doggy section and pets at home well i tell you what that company i must have kept them afloat during all this pandemic because the money i've spent i've got a vip card now <laughs> so there's another thing that i notice that are very much like having a child with a dog number four the baby talk now i don't really talk baby talk to my cats I mean, I might call them baby or sweetheart or something like that. But I noticed that my um, vocabulary has gone backward. <laughs> you know, I mean, I did it with Jay when he was a baby. Of course you do. Everyone coos at a baby, don't they? But, you know, when, as Jay got older, it started to, you know, diminish and come to a full stop. 
But now I've started doing it again, you know, and I do it in public as well. I don't know what people must think. But, you know, come on, baby, and come and have your num-nums, and it's nice, nice time now, and, you know, all that sort of stuff, you know, bickies and bankies, you know, and all this. So I've gone, I've gone a little bit backwards, like I said, with my vocabulary. So, again, you know, you, you do that with children, don't you? Uh, what else did I know? I write down. Let me have a look. Like I said, I've had to write it all down because you know what I'm like. I'm a bit of an airhead. I forget things. Um, they follow you around everywhere, don't they? I didn't realise this with dogs. You know, with cats, they're very independent. They go where they want to go. Um, they they'll come to you for the occasional bit of fuss, and they'll come to you when they want something to eat. But most of the time, they get on with what they want to get on with and they leave you to get on with what you want to do but dogs are different aren't they he follows me around everywhere whether I be stood in the kitchen ironing he's at, the, he's at my feet even if I'm cooking I have to put the baby gate shut on the living room and leave him in the living room on his own and I can hear him pouring you know to get out to get to me they're very um they're very dependent on their owners. They like constant attention, constant company. They're not very independent at all, like a, like a pussycat. Um, and I've noticed as well, um, you know, Jay still has... I still have childcare, you know, my sister and my father. He's gone off now, look. Um they look after Jay. So I still have childcare with Jay because he's only 12. But they need childcare. And, I, and I, I was chatting away to Dom the other day and I said, you know, when I go back to work and when things start opening up, because um, I think the restrictions are going to be lifted uh, here in England on the 12th of this month, we'll have to do some investigating into um, uh, dog sitters my husband looked at me and says, well, you know, who's going to look after Milo when we need to go places, you know? So that's another thing that's very much like childlike with a dog. They they need babysitting, basically. Um, I don't know how much it's going to cost me. I'm going to have to do, some, do a bit of research. I'm sure there's there'll, there'll be plenty of them around. I'm, I'm going to do some investigation about that. But... Um, Another thing I noticed, you know, like when you have a baby, a child, it's very much a military organisation, you know, your, your day. Everything's scheduled, everything's routine, you know, bedtime, getting up in the morning, breakfast, you know, you have your little procedure that you go through to get through the day. Well, cats, like I say, they're very independent, you know, you put some food down, and they come and go and they have a little bite and they go off somewhere and then they'll come back. Yeah, you have your little things that you do every morning for them, putting fresh biscuits down, doing the cat litter and all that. But they're very free and easy, you know, very relaxed, you know, ad hoc sort of thing. But dogs are not like that, are they? You know, it, it, it it's like having a, a little kid again. Getting up, breakfast, going for walkies, wee-wee poo-poos. You know, um, of a night time, I put him to bed like a baby. I mean, I really do. He goes to sleep in eyes. I put him in his bed. I tuck him in, you know. Um, I tell him that Nanny's going to see him in the morning and give him his breakfast. And I, I tell him to have a nice dream. You know, it, it's just like, it's just like having a child. So anyway, those are my things. That I noticed, I'm sure I've forgotten loads, and I'm gonna stop the camera in a minute, and and I'm gonna think, oh, well, why didn't I say this? Oh, why didn't I say that? But um, I'd be really interested to hear back from any of you if you've experienced this phenomenon with having a dog. You know whether you think it's very much like having a child, more so than you know having a cat or any other pet, and. Um, I'd also like to know if you think I'm balmy or not. <laughs> You're probably all saying, yeah, you are. Um, 
and also I'd like to, if you've got anything to add to the list that you do with your dogs, let me know. We'll have a bit of a laugh in the uh, comment section. Anyway, it's been great talking to you and um, take care of yourselves. See you later. Bye.